Hello, 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 everybody. So we are going to talk a little bit about stoichiometry today. So we have been um, taking a look at unit conversions. How can we convert between um, units of anything using dimensional analysis? And now specifically in the context of chemical reactions, we're going to look at something called stoichiometry, which is um, to basically just dimensional analysis in the context of a chemical reaction. So um, we looked at several examples in our gizmo that we did um, for how to convert between moles and mass and um, particles and mass. And so we're going to just uh, gather all of our knowledge here in one place, take a couple of notes, do a couple of examples, um, so that way we're ready to really hit the ground running tomorrow uh, when we pr put this into practice. So... Um, we are going to uh, start out with grams and moles. So let's say we have some known mass of a substance and we want to convert to moles of that substance or vice versa. We have some number of known moles of a substance and we want to convert to grams of that same substance. Keyword here being same. So this is just a conversion and using the same substance between grams and moles. So what conversion factor do we need to do this? Well, the conversion factor we need kind of tells us in the name. We're converting between grams, which is a unit of mass, and moles. So we need the molar mass conversion factor. So the molar mass conversion factor, um, you can write in one of two ways. Remember, conversion factors can be flipped. You just uh, flip them in any which way you need to make your units cancel out because these things are essentially just equal to one. They are just equal to one. So we can put units of mass on top, which means we can have our molar mass in grams in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have one mole of that substance. So remember, molar mass is the mass in grams per one mole. So that means whenever we're doing the molar mass conversion factor, we have to calculate the molar mass, but we know it's always per one mole of that substance. So this is one way we can write this. The other way is if we flip it, it means the exact same thing. Here we're saying mass per one mole, or we can say one mole is some amount of mass. So these two conversion factors mean the same. You can flip them according to the units that you have. So um, molar mass is found on the periodic table. You're going to calculate the molar mass of the compound by adding up atomic masses for each element. Remember to multiply by any subscripts you've got in your compound formula. Um, but this is an important note for the molar mass calculations. So let's, uh, let's do an example. We're gonna, I'm going to do one example with you, and then I'm going to have you try and do the second example on your own, flip-flopping and then checking in with the answer key. So this says, how many moles of carbon are in a 13.2 gram sample of carbon? So um, here I tell you exactly which conversion you're doing. Um, we are doing a grams to moles conversions. If I didn't give you that information, how would you figure that out? Remember, when we're doing stoichiometry, the first thing we want to do is identify our question. How many moles, so how many moles, that's our unknown, of carbon are in a 13.2 gram sample? So we know that we have 13.2 grams. This is our known quantity. And we want to figure out how many moles is this 13.2 gram quantity. So always start by setting up your question. Now we're ready to do some dimensional analysis. All right, so we always start out by writing our known as a fraction over one. So we have 13.2 grams of carbon over one. I am going to put the C in there to remind myself what the substance is. Anytime you are doing um, stoichiometry, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you put in the identity of your substance into your stoichiometry problems. If you're converting between same substances, um, it's not that big of a deal because it's the same substance. However, once we start getting to converting between substances, you will be required to include the sample, the substance that you are using in your stoichiometry to make sure your units cancel. So it's a good habit just to get into that now. Okay, so here's our known conversion. We know we have 13.2 grams of carbon. I want to convert this at the end to get something in units of moles of carbon. 
So we have a conversion factor that takes us between grams and moles directly. This is one of the ones we looked at in our gizmo. So we need the molar mass conversion factor. I need grams of carbon to cancel out, which means in my conversion factor, grams of carbon better go in the bottom. And for molar mass, remember this is always the molar mass in grams per one mole of that substance. Always, every time, one mole. So we're going to write that in our numerator. Now I have to find the molar mass of carbon. Luckily, carbon is just an element, so I took the easy one. You guys do the hard one. So I took the easy one. I have to just look on the periodic table and look up carbon and see that the molar mass of carbon is 12.011 grams per one mole. So now to complete this um, to complete this calculation, all I have to do is cross, is cross cancel my units. So grams of carbon cancels with grams of carbon. I'm left with units of moles of carbon, which is exactly what I wanted at the end, so that's good news. And now I just um, plug things into my calculator. 13.2 times 1, 13.2, divided by 12.011, and that's going to get me 1.10 moles of carbon. If you plug that into your calculator, you don't get exactly that number, but remember we're doing calculations, so we have to account for significant figures. So here... 13.2 grams. This has um, three significant figures in it, which means my final answer needs three significant figures. So, donezo, box it, move on. All right, you're going to try one now, going from moles to grams, opposite of what I just did. So, pause the video, complete that calculation, check in with the answer key, then come on back. All right. So, we have taken a look at basically one step conversion so far. We've done mass to moles, um, and then we can also talk about particles to moles, or moles to moles, one step conversions. But if you want to convert between substances, um, between masses, moles, particles of different substances, um, you have to make sure that you have a balanced chemical reaction equation, and you have to make sure that you have your mole ratios. So um, I have created for you this uh, helpful diagram, or at least I think it's helpful, um, to kind of walk you through how you do these conversions. So this is called the mole map. Basically, you can start at any point on this mole map, and it will help you convert between masses, moles, and particles of um, either between the same substance or between two different substances. So let's see how this works. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, let's say I'm going to start out with my first problem right here. I want to convert between different substances. There's two things I can convert between. I can start with um, either mass moles or particles of one substance and get to mass moles or particles of the other. But you cannot convert between any two substances without first being in units of moles. Remember that our balanced chemical reaction equations um, give us mole ratios in, the, in those um, coefficients in front of each compound or each element formula, whatever you have in there. Those give us the mole ratios between substances. So I must first always, if I'm going um, between substances, I have to make use of this section of the map right here. Basically, the mole map takes... Um, takes, your, subs takes um, your substances and it kind of divides the map in half. Everything on this side would be talking about what substance, let's just call it A for right now. Everything on this side would be talking about substance B. So this would be mass, moles, and particles of substance B. Alternatively, you have mass, moles, and particles of substance A on the other side. So if I want to convert between A and B, I have to go through that mole-to-mole -mole ratio arrow. No other way around it. So to convert between different substances, the first thing you always need is you need the mole ratio conversion factor. Okay, so I'm going to set this up in a general format. So basically, if we have x1, this represents just some number of moles of substance A. I can convert to x2, some other number, moles of substance b. So just to write us a note, x1 and x2 are the coefficients of 
from the balanced reaction equation. These coefficients tell us the mole ratios. So important coefficients in chemical reactions equations represent number of moles. It is impossible to convert between different substances without first having a balanced chemical equation. If it's not balanced, you're gonna end up with the wrong mole ratios and then just get screwed. And then at the end, um, always label your numbers with both values and units. You want to make sure you're telling people which substance you have and how much of that substance that you have. So let's take a look at one example here. Let's say that I'm making water. I have hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas, and at the end I'm making gaseous water. How many moles of H2O are produced from one mole of O2? Well, to first just answer that question, I look at the mole ratios. So in my equation here, for every two moles of hydrogen, I need one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of um, water. So how many moles of O2 are produced, or how many moles of H2O are produced from one mole of O2? Well, if I have one mole of O2, I'm producing two moles of H2O. I just use the balanced chemical reaction equation. And remember, this can show you ratios between any of the substances. So if I have two moles of H2O, I'm producing two, or if I have two moles of H2, I'm producing two moles of H2O. You can do conversions for anything in there. So anyway. All right, how many moles of H2O are made from the reaction of 4.2 moles of O2? Okay, so let's take this one, break it down for a second. What's this question asking us to find? How many moles are made? How many moles of H2O are made from the reaction of 4.2 moles of O2? So I know that I have 4.2 moles of O2. What am I trying to find? How many moles of H2O? Question mark, moles H2O. So this is what I meant with values and units. You need to make sure that you have the number and the units for every substance. So I have 4.2 value units moles of O2. All right, so if I wanna convert between moles of O2 and moles of H2O, I need the mole ratio, um, I need the mole ratio conversion factor. But I can also use the mole map. I'm going to just double check that, these, that this is the conversion factor I need. So I'm starting out with moles of some substance. So let's call O2 our substance A because that's our known substance. That means on the mole map, I'm starting at this location. I have moles of one substance. I want to get to, uh, the question is asking me to find moles of a different substance, which means I'm now working in substance B. I'm getting to moles of H2O. That would put me right here on the mole map. So how do I get there? I have to cross through this arrow. The arrows that you cross through are labeled with the conversion factors that you need. Every arrow you cross through means you need that one conversion factor. So if I cross through multiple arrows, I need multiple conversion factors. Here I'm only crossing through the one arrow, which means I only need the one conversion factor. So to take me from moles of A to moles of B, I need the mole to mole ratio, moles A over moles B. So let me come down here and let's try this problem out. So I know that I'm starting out with 4.2 moles of O2. My known, write that as a fraction over one. Now my conversion factor I need is the mole to mole ratio. So this means that I need moles of my known substance and the moles of the substance I want to convert to. So my known substance is oxygen, which means that has to go in the denominator. How many moles of O2 do I have? Look up at the balanced chemical equation. I have one. I'm converting two moles of H2O. This is the what I want to get out at the end. So that's the uh, factor that needs to go in the numerator. How many moles of H2O um, are needed based on one mole of O2? Balanced chemical equation tells me two moles of H2O. So I cross. Moles of H2O, moles of H2O, bye. Oh, moles of O2 and moles of O2, ha. Huh. Um, it's still early. <laughs> and then I'm ending up with moles of H2O, which is exactly the units that I want at the end. So 4.2 times two is gonna give me 8.4 
moles of H2O. I need two sig figs in my answer, so this is the correct rounding for that one right there. 8.4 moles of H2O. Okay, so now we can do other examples. Um, I'm going to leave example two for you to try. Fill in the mole ratio. Um, try to determine the answer to that question. So pause the video, try this one out, check the answer key, then come on back. So now that we've completed some one-step conversions, what we can do now is we can try multi-step conversions. So multi-step, which means multiple arrows on our mole map, which means we need multiple conversion factors in our um, dimensional analysis. So important for multi-step conversions, always start by writing your unknown and unknown. Always start by writing your question, essentially. Then use the mole map to find um, out how many steps you're going to need. So it says at the bottom of these notes, I actually switched around the order a little bit, so uh, the mole map is up a little bit higher. <laughs> um, so let's do an example. If 54 grams of Cl2 are reacted, how many grams of NaCl can be made? All right, let's take a look at this, at this chemical reaction equation first. First step, always make sure you have a balanced chemical reaction equation. So do we? No, we gotta fix it. I have two um, chlorine atoms on the left, which means I need two on the right. Two in the reactants, two in the products. Boom, donezo, great. Oh no, that changed my sodiums. Now I need two over here. Okay, now we're donezo. All right. So uh, let's start out by identifying our question. If 54 grams of CO2 are reacted, how many grams of NaCl can be made? So what's my known? Well, I have 54 grams of Cl2. 50 four grams Cl2. What am I being asked to find? I want to convert this value to how many grams of NaCl can be made. So I need question mark grams of NaCl. All right. So I am starting out with masses of one substance and converting to mass of another substance. So let's check out the mole map. According to the mole map, let me erase this. I'm starting out with mass of one substance. So that means I'm starting out here. Your, um, your initial substance, your starting substance, I recommend calling substance A. It really doesn't matter. You could start as substance B too, who cares? So we're starting out at mass of substance A. That means this is my initial, this is where I'm starting. I need to get to mass of another substance. I need to get over here. There is no direct conversion factor that takes me from mass to mass. So I have to only follow through the arrows. So the first arrow I go through is this one right here, my only option. I have to convert between mass and moles first. Remember, moles is a safe space. Always convert to moles first if you get stuck. That's the easiest way to work through these problems. You're stuck, convert to moles. All right, so I'm going for mass of moles first, which means my first conversion factor needs to be my molar mass conversion factor. Then I need to get over to a new substance. So I can't go this way because that's gonna keep me in the same substance. So instead, I'm gonna go this way. That's gonna take me between substances. So my second conversion factor is gonna be the mole to mole ratio. All right, now I'm at this point. I'm at moles of substance B, which is great. I'm in moles of my other substance, but I need to get to mass. So I need one more conversion factor. How do I get from moles to mass? I follow this arrow right here. So my third conversion factor is going to be the molar mass conversion factor. Again, it's the molar mass conversion factor because I'm converting between moles and mass in this scenario, but it's not the same molar mass conversion factor as my first conversion because that's going from mass and moles of one substance this is going from mass and moles of Cl2. And then on the other side, I'm doing mass and moles for NaCl. If you want, if it's helpful for to you, you can always on your mole maps um, label the substances you're working with. You can label this like I did A equals Cl2, B equals NaCl. You will always have um, this handout available to you on your um, quizzes and your unit tests as well. And they're laminated, so you can write over them as long as you erase at the end. Okay, so I need molar mass, I need mole to mole, I need molar mass. I'm going to write those conversion factors down at the bottom so I don't forget. So my first conversion factor is molar mass. My second conversion factor is mole to mole. And my third conversion factor again is molar mass. All right, so let's start out with writing our known. We have 54 grams of Cl2 over one. 
And now I need to convert this to moles of Cl2 using my molar mass conversion factor. Molar mass is grams per mole or mass per mole, or flip it, moles per mass. So which order do I need mine in? Well, I need grams of Cl2 to cancel, so they gotta go in the denominator. So I know I need grams of Cl2 down here, which means on the top has to go moles. How many? One, always. Molar mass is always per one mole of Cl2, or one mole of whatever substance you're working with. Okay, so that's good, check, molar mass conversion factor. I have to still fill in my molar mass right there, but I'm gonna do everything to set everything else up first. Okay, second conversion factor. Now I need the mole to mole conversion factor. So this is the one where I have to check my balanced chemical equation because that's where I get my number of moles from. So I know that I'm working with Cl2 and NaCl. These are my substances. So moles, what's the mole ratio between them? Well, for every one mole of Cl2, I'm making two moles of NaCl from my balanced chemical equation. So those are the mole ratios I need to fill in. What goes in the denominator? Got to be Cl2 because it's Cl2 in the numerator of the previous conversion factor. So I have one mole of Cl2 from my balanced chemical equation, and I have two moles of NaCl from my balanced chemical equation. All right, boom, check, did it, yay, last one. So now I gotta convert between moles and mass, but I'm doing moles and mass for NaCl now. So, um, how am I gonna flip it? Am I gonna put grams over moles or moles over grams? Well, the numerator for my previous conversion factor is moles of NaCl, which means it has to go in the denominator for the next conversion factor. So I know that I'm going to have one mole of NaCl in the denominator because molar mass is always one mole. I know that seems repetitive and like I've repeated it 750 times, but I guarantee you, you get to a test, you get nervous, you're going to forget how many moles goes in the molar mass conversion factor. Always one, always one. All right. So then in the numerator, I got to put my mass. So here I need my molar mass in grams for NaCl. So I just got to find that, um, calculate that out really quick, and then throw those numbers in there. So um, I did calculate the molar masses. I'm just going to give them to you to put into here. So the molar mass for chlorine is 70.9 grams. Molar mass for NaCl is 58.44 grams. So then when I take a look at my units to make sure that they cancel, I got grams of Cl cross-canceling with grams of Cl2. Moles of Cl2 cross-canceling with moles of Cl2. Moles of NaCl, cross-canceling with moles of NaCl. And my only units left are grams of NaCl. So this is what I told you before with my, with my hot tips. If the unit in your numerator, the last unit in your numerator for your last conversion factor is not the units that you want, you messed up somewhere, we got to go back. But I know that I want grams of NaCl to be my final unit, so this is good. This is, this is exactly what I want. So when I calculate this out, I need to round my final answer to two significant figures because that's what I have in my problem. So when I throw this in my calculator, I end up with 89 grams of NaCl. Put a box around it, call it good. All right, so um, we are going to practice this a lot more in the upcoming week, so make sure... Um, you have your notes filled out. You want to make sure that you have access to your mole map and then come with an attitude that math is your friend and we're ready to go. We're ready to do this.